hello i'm back with another review this time on ghana must go by tay tay selassie i think that's her name tay selassie i'm gonna go with that tay selassie um yeah it was a it was a good book i think she's a great writer so as someone who's thinking about going into writing it was good to read someone who's writing I really like and thought that I could learn a lot from. So, yeah. Um, let me just pull up my notes. Right. So, it's Ghana Must Go by Tai Selassie. Um, published in March 2013. So, it's a few years older now. Like, seven, I think. Yeah, 20. Yeah, seven. Uh, the cover. Well, first, I'm going to talk about... How I got to know this book. I know this book one because I know the author Tai Selassie did a TED talk that some of you might have heard of. Well, I don't know. Um, TED talk called Don't Ask Me Where I'm From, Ask Me Where I'm Local To that kind of talks about a little of what she touches on on this book that people come from a lot of different places. It's not necessarily where have you lived, but more so about those experiences and that culture that shapes who you are. So this book um that's how i knew her it was it was a ted talk that was rec recommended to me from multiple people so one day i eventually looked it up and so i saw that she wrote a little and i saw this book and then after i read the last book that i read which was baba segi's this was kind of in the um uh, recommended section of goodreads and i was really like oh i really want to read another good book after reading Baba Segi so I did a little research and Ghana Must Go just kept coming up after I looked for like what books to read next so I was like since it's coming up that's clearly a sign that I should read it so yeah with the cover um it's a decent cover it's not that extravagant or it's not like wow like oh this artist needs to be in every museum it's just a nice cover uh but it is like a nice cover enough like the colors are nice it's simple enough the design is nice it's, design is like well you'll see it because i'll put it here but it's like orange or i want to say it's red blue and yellow little flowers that kind of look like spongebob flowers to me um or just not even maybe not even flowers just geometrical shapes but yeah it's just like a nice book cover in the title is like the way that the title is positioned on the cover makes it so that it will look cute on a coffee table or like a display book on your bookshelf um yeah yeah so really the cover wasn't what made me want to read the book it was more so the author i was really interested in her life after hearing her ted talk and the fact that the book kept coming up i'm like okay let me get to it so now or into technicality like i said like i said this is a beautifully written book like if you're into writing it's always good to read other people writing to better your own writing and i would if you're like trying to get better at complex sentences this is the book to read like her sentences are so beautiful so much so that each sentence each little complex sentence is like it's a poem within itself like i really enjoyed her writing and even you know someone is really good at writing when they do complex sentences and you still can follow along like i had no trouble following all the different commas and whatnot so i technicality very good but what i would say with the writing though is that i could have done in the beginning there's like a family chart and then there's like a definition word chart type of thing that give you like people names and places and like tell you the definition of them and how to pronounce them and whatnot i thought this was pretty unnecessary uh the family tree wasn't that hard to follow like i don't think i referenced the family tree once as i was reading um the family wasn't that complex to me in my opinion um and then even with the word chart like i thought that was pretty i think it, okay it, i guess it was nice i guess that kind of shows you who her audience was though um with using having that um uh, word chart i mean yeah but i think that if she was gonna do a word chart it would have been better to just have translations within it because she did use like a mixture of god and i want to say yoruba 
you mostly just got in Yoruba. If there was other languages, I didn't come across. I didn't recognize them. Um, and it was kind of sometimes like I would want to. I I would look at the translation, like Google the translation, or ask one of my um one of my friends if he knew what it meant just to like because i thought it would add more to like i thought it was something that i needed to know to actually understand what was going on so i'm like if you're gonna have a word chart and give definitions and translations it would be better to actually give translations and definitions of the phrases that you actually use rather than names and places but um i think that I kind of dislike when authors give us too much information as readers before we start reading because that shows that you don't trust me as a reader to be able to follow along and like inf have inferences that are accurate and whatnot. But like it was okay. I guess if people are into that, they could use that. I just didn't find myself using it that much. Um, but what I really did appreciate was the way that the chapters or the book was sectioned so was gone going go after you read the book it makes sense you're like oh that's actually that's actually nice and but also before ever reading just looking at the chapters i was like hmm gone going go that kind of like even told a story for me within itself like just those sections so i think once again the person is clearly very creative a very talented writer um and it's very it's a very good book to read for that just to even just like admired her writing and take notes of her writing um but the story was also pretty good as well it's not so much of an exciting story but it's still a good story like i said the last book by segi's wives that i read like that was an exciting story like oh jaw dropping this is not so much more so jaw dropping it's more heart wrenching it's like more of a like that type of i don't know how to explain it like i wasn't necessarily like oh my gosh but it was more like a oh my gosh <laughs> you get what i'm saying but it was still good um i didn't feel rushed to read it i really took my time with this book but um i still wanted to finish it like i wasn't like rushed to finish it but i knew that i was going to finish this book like i wanted to finish the story so it's it's still engaging it's just that not as a as much of an adrenaline that's what i think i'm trying to say it's no adrenaline rush rush with this type of story um uh, but it really you really had to get into the zone of the story like you really this is not something that i would recommend that you read like while you're in the midst of a party i know you probably wouldn't be reading but I, it's really something that you have to sit down and concentrate on and to actually fully understand and follow the story uh and it's like but that's kind of one of the things that i really wanted because i'm really like in my own space right now and this book is like one of those books that you tran like you transfer yourself into that world of that story it is so smooth like her storytelling is so soothing and so smooth that you don't even realize that you're now that you're in this world as you're reading it like i really didn't even notice it until i every time until after i'm like okay i gotta stop reading this is my this is my limit for today and then i literally like i kind of physically feel myself exiting the world i thought that was really really um nice one itch that i did have with the story was the twin storyline this is going to be spoilers i don't really care anymore to like walk around spoilers so this is going to be a spoiler the storyline of kahende and taiwo like kahende like uncle femi forcing kahende to touch taiwo i thought was um pretty unnecessary and felt like a yucky trope that she could move away like I, it was unnecessary i didn't even feel like it was enough build up or like enough like oh that makes sense that that would happen or i i just feel like it was really unnecessary and something that was trying to that she kind of threw in there to bring that exciting factor that i don't really think the story needed to be good but like i understand you want to have a little bit of drama in a novel but yeah and i guess the fact that she's also a twin you can tell that she's a twin um one from looking at her wikipedia page and two her name is taye which means like which is the name that uh the older twin is given in nigeria but the fact that she's a twin don't make that less creepy for me like the storyline of them touching on themselves i just feel like that's always like a a trope that people fall on like oh twins must be attracted to each other like i don't know i feel like that's very like a narcissistic trope that people like to play into that don't necessarily reflect twins relationship and i don't even think that it needed to reflect their relationship either um 
yeah so but other than that the story was a really nice nice story it's not like a drama filled story it's not a story that I'm like gossiping about if i knew but it's still a very nice story the only part that was like worth gossiping about was the twins part and like i said i really could have done without the twins part i really think the fact that he called her a whore would have been enough fact for them to like not be talking or have that tension between them i don't think that that molestation um storyline or backstory needed to happen but on to the relevance uh another while i was doing research on this book um uh, what i came across uh was the history of ghana must go which was like a political movement in nigeria where they were trying to it was a lot of um well i won't say a lot it was my migrants immigrants from ghana in nigeria and i think it was in the 1980s that it was like this political movement to get those immigrants out and send them back to um ghana so the phrase ghana must go uh and i think that was that at first reading the story and knowing that i knew that political history because my friend told me about it um when i was like oh i might read this book and he was like oh ghana must go i know about that that's the book must be about that i'm like reading the description like that book it has nothing to do with that but i kept that in mind i'm like hmm um I wonder how that relates to that or if it was just a coincidence and no relation but the phrase and the reference to it oh one big thing one staple of Ghana must go was the little uh, I don't it's like a tote the blue white and red plaid totes that's like people use for like clothes and whatnot that's what the Ghanaians used when they were like moving back home so that was like that tote is like a staple they those little bags are called Ghana must go um and that made an appearance at the end and I thought that was really like it when that made the appearance and knowing that history that's when it kind of clicked for me like the the second wife bringing the bag and like with the slippers in it and the fact that he, the father was like a person that always like that just go when things got tough I thought that was um it it finally clicked and the story the story came full circle for me and made sense um uh, which kind of goes to this idea of immigrants with the the phrase Ghana must go but the the family is like centered around immigration in a way the mom migrated from Nigeria to Ghana then Ghana to America and the dad from Ghana to America so it kind of just made me think of how immigration really comments a lot about home um what is someone's home um what does it mean to leave your home to make a home somewhere else and how does that connect that you have to leave your home to make a home somewhere else especially i was thinking a lot about how both of the parents homes made it so that they couldn't live there anymore so it wasn't even necessarily their home anymore but um and that kind of that struggle moves along where you're trying to make a home where a place where it's clearly not your home uh a quote that made me that i was thinking about that I think really speaks to this is on let me just pull it up hopefully my notes should transfer over I don't see why they wouldn't oh this is page 65 I don't know what chapter this is, this is but it say it will happen to someone else a million and one someone else's the same senseless loss the same tearless hurt this was one perk of growing up poor in the tropics no one ever needed the details like just this idea that this is not particular to them but it's just like this idea of loss i was really thinking about like the immigration has to have this form of loss but i also was thinking about how this start the cycle of leaving um like i said ghana must go this story of like them always leaving and even like him always having to his wife bringing the slippers something that he left behind like just this idea of leaving it made me think of the idea of first generation like how is it the first generation do the generations of be previously certainly are erased or start over just because of the moving especially because a big thing that was like kept coming up in the story was the fact that they didn't talk about their past they didn't talk about their history and it made me think of what does it mean to be what is saying somebody is first gen what is that saying i know it's saying that they are first generation in the country but 
it's kind of weird to say first generation because yes they may be first generation in the country but the people before the previous generations the actual first generations um all of their actions regardless of what those actions was or all of that history brought the is what brought the future into fruition so it just made me think about um and it's just like i don't i feel like first generation is such an european thing like you only say first generation uh when first generation when they move to like european countries like then you're first generation but i feel like do they say that when say a congolese person moves to like nigeria do they be like oh this is the first gen i don't see that happening so then it's brought me to the question of belonging like i feel like home you can't talk about home or wanting a home which was a big part of this story without having this idea of belonging because home is the place that you belong that's why everyone launched for that but um it just made me think what comes with the feeling of belonging it usually is followed by shame like being sh feeling shame that you don't belong or hurt um insecurity of like is this something about me that don't belong um also loneliness because usually it's not the fact home is a concept not necessarily a place so you can feel like you don't belong because there's no one there with you so it's just you which is a loneliness um and then it made me even think about belonging and how that could shiftly change depending on the context and where you're at for example sadie who um was better like i don't know what how to say this but like she was bulimic like she made herself throw up because she felt like she was too big and then previously she talked about how she used to be a ballerina but then something hurt she realized her body like she became really insecure or really aware of her body and realized that she didn't have the body of a ballerina so she didn't belong at belong to the dancing real anymore and then when she finally went home to her dad's village and saw them dancing and finally like got up to dance and saw people like her dancing it, it clicked that she's actually a dancer um so where she thought she didn't belong where she didn't belong somewhere else was exactly where she belonged some in the, another place so it just made me think a lot about that and then um Taiwo being able to finally heal once again at her dad's village at the water um and it's like she went to nigeria where that's supposedly where she belonged at the moment like her mom was like oh it's better for you to be there than here right now and the trauma coming from that idea of her not belonging to one place but she belong to another and how she finally healed at a place that she's never even been before um and then kahende accepting love and how um it was so much about beauty with him and art and how one that wasn't i don't know conventionally beautiful to him was the one that he felt like he belonged to um and then also ole a running running from labels uh like him not wanting to label his relationship with olu i mean him not wanting to read it him not wanting to label his relationship with ling and like moving away from labels which with a label that means you belong to something and him not wanting those labels because he didn't want something to start meaning that something would have to end it was just a lot of like a lot of things about belonging to me that you can draw on those were just like kind of summarized and probably don't even make sense because i kind of just breezed past them since they were just bulletin on my notes but yeah i think it made me think a lot about belonging um the idea of immigration and home and those like clearly those all melt together they're not like I made them into like separate sub things but like they're clearly one bigger thing connected but overall i give this a 6.8 out of 7 um it's a nice read like like i said it was a good time for me because i've been thinking a lot about how i want to start writing again and it was nice to um read someone good writing and take note of that while also being engaged with the story and being able to leave my world and into another world right now so yeah 6.8 out of 7 i think that's pretty good i would say that's pretty good yeah starting for five is like good and this is like pretty good i was close to giving it a seven but i'm like eh, it was okay because i wouldn't necessarily i would recommend it like i'm like oh it's a good book but it wouldn't be a first book that comes to mind when i'm like oh yeah you should definitely read this but yeah